Hi, this is Dr. Andy Barlow with the American Functional Neurology Institute, and I can be found online at afniseminars.com, or you can reach me at 662-844-1414. I'm in private, private practice with Dr. Matt Mackey of the Chiropractic Neurology Center of Tupelo. Now today, we're going to be talking about another long track, and this is called the cortical spinal track. Now this has to do with volitional or voluntary movement of our extremities. So when we're doing a neurological exam, we always want to find where is the longitudinal level of the lesion. So when a patient comes in with a complaint, they may come in with neck pain, shoulder, hand numbness or foot numbness. We know where the symptom is, but where is the actual longitudinal level of the lesion? This is why we have to do a complete head to toe functional neuro neurological exam and this motor pathway, testing this motor pathway, is part of a functional neurological exam. <clears throat> so what we're going to do here, we'll just say that this is the left side, and this is the right side. So the patient is actually looking at you, if you will. So we're talking about uh, area four in the brain, in the motor, primary motor cortex, area four. So if we look at the side view of the brain, what we're looking at here is this area in front of the central sulcus of Orlando, the motor cortex, the primary motor cortex. We have what is called, in this area here, the corona radiata. And it actually just stands for radiating crown. And this area here, kind of, I guess it resembles somewhat of a boomerang, I guess you could say. And this is your internal capsule. And the internal capsule is where the corona radiata dump into, if you will, they're going to fire down into the brain stem. The first place they're going to stop is in the mesencephalon. <clears throat> or they're going to fire through. They don't stop at the mesencephalon. They fire through the mesencephalon in the cerebral peduncle. Then they're going to fire through these pontine nuclei. There's about 20 million of these pontine nuclei. They're going to come through here. They're going to fire through into the medulla. And at the medulla, they're actually going to decusate. This pathway is going to decusate in the medulla. Once it decusates at the cervicomedullary junction, this is now going to fire down into the spinal cord, in the spinal cord area. In the spinal cord area, this is called the cortical spinal tract. The cortical spinal tract. Now, everything that we've drawn up to this point is actually called an upper motor neuron. So if a person has an upper motor neuron lesion, there are specific signs and symptoms that are associated with that. Like they may have spasticity, they may have rigidity, they may have hyperreflexia. So when you do your reflex hammer, there may be some type of hyperreflexia with that. Now, from here, uh, we're going to send the synapse off into the ventral horn cell. And this ventral horn cell is going to send an axon out, and it's going to release acetylcholine it's what is called the neuromuscular junction. And at this point, when we release that acetylcholine, we're actually going to be able to move our extremities. Now, everything that I've written in blue here, this is a lower motor neuron. So we have a lower motor neuron lesion. There's going to be specific signs and symptoms associated with that, like uh, muscle atrophy, hypotonia, those types of things. So when we're doing our neurological exam, we need to be aware of what is this motor pathway? Where does it originate? What pathways in the, the mesencephalon, pons, and medulla? Where does it decusate in the medulla? And then where does it fire off a collateral, fires off in the, in the ventral horn cell to actually allow volitional movement in our upper and lower extremities? So what we're going to do next is we're actually going to test this pathway so I can show you exactly how we do it in our clinic to find out if this patient has uh, a problem with their motor control from the brain down to the receptor. All right, so we're in here with Forrest, and he's been so, uh, so nice to be a model for us today. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to test reflexes. We have 10 reflexes that we want to test. And, and keep in mind that this patient may have come in with fibromyalgia. Heck, they may have come in with a, with a knee pain problem, but I'm still going to do a complete neurological exam on the patient. Because if I see anything with these reflexes that are going on in the upper extremity, I'm actually going to take an x-ray of the neck. Okay, because why is this person having some type of, of hypotonic reflexion? Well, the only reason, one of the reasons for that is we can have a spinal cord 
problem where we can have a peripheral nerve issue that we need to look at. So we're going to do these reflexes. I'm going to tell a patient we're going to do 10 reflexes, and I'll tell you if I see something wrong. This first one is C5. All right, that's good. Then we're going to compare side to side. That's good. C6 brachioradialis. That's good. C6 brachioradialis. C7. C7 tricep. L4. All right, L4. All right. And then S1. These are really good reflexes right here, so you need to bet this one is a little bit more hyper reflexive than I'd like to see it. But these are, are like scouting reports that I want to see. And I'll tell a patient, well, we, <clears throat> we did 10 reflexes, and for us, they're really all good. But a lot of times you see people with chronic health problems, you may have 7 of 10 reflexes that are diminished, and they need to know that. Okay. Now we're going to do uh, a, what I call a scouting report for the upper extremity muscle test. So the first thing we're going to do, this is testing the ulnar nerve. That kind of looks like a U. So uh, when you come to the AFNI seminars, I'll explain why this is the ulnar nerve. And I'll tell the patient, do this on both sides. We're going to test your ulnar nerve. We're going to compare right to left. That's really good and strong. I want you to bring your hand in like this. This is, uh, this is the opponent's digitime minimi. This is part of the ulnar nerve. And this is the opponent's pollicis, which is part of the median nerve. So we can kind of test both of those together. Hold, hold, and then when we do this, I'm going to take this piece of paper, put on the thumb, and, and I, if they're strong in the ulnar nerve, they should be able to hold that. Okay, hold, okay, good, hold, all right. So now we've tested the ulnar nerve, and now we're going to test purely the median nerve with the OK sign. So we're going to take this. This is actually testing the anterior interosseous, which is part of a branch off the median nerve, and I think Forrest can tell that the left side is a little bit weaker than the right side because he's going to look at me when that happens. Okay, and then the next thing we're going to test is the radial nerve. So we'll say thumbs up, all right, hold. So if we do this thumbs up, and again he's weak on this side, the reason I don't test everything through here, this is the scouting report. If everything distal is strong, everything proximal will be strong. So we've tested the ulnar nerve, we tested the median nerve, and we tested the radial nerve. If I see something wrong, do we want to test something else? Absolutely, go ahead and do that. Now we're going to have the patient stand up, and we're going to have them walk on their heels, and they can just, you know, and then walk on their toes. All right, good. Okay, let's have a seat for me. And so what we've done there is we've done a scouting report to see does this person have good reflexes. If they do, perfect, we move on. If we don't, then we have to find out why is this person having hyperreflexia or a hyporeflexia. Do they have adequate muscle test? If they do, good. If they don't, then we have to go into a little bit more detail as to why this person may have some problems over here with, uh, uh, with the median nerve. If they can't walk on their heel or their toes, why, do we, why are they having difficulty doing that? So, what we talked about today is we talked about at the primary motor cortex uh, in area four. This is going to fire down to the uh, uh, th through the internal capsule, I'll get it right in a minute, internal capsule through the mesencephalon, pond is going to decussate in the medulla, and then it's going to fire down on this right side of the body, so this left brain controls the right side of the body, and if this entire nerve pathway is functioning properly, we should have proper reflexes, we should have proper motor strength, and if not, we have to find out as a functional neurologist, why not? So. I'm Dr. Andy Barlow. I've enjoyed spending these few minutes with you talking about the motor pathway. If you have any questions, you can call me at 662-844-1414.